head. So we started to see this change, this, these, this lava directed towards the northeast beginning in mid-2013. But then we had a, another big change. One of the big changes uh, was on June 27, 2014. We had a kind of a brief period of pressure buildup in Puo. And what that resulted in is basically lava broke out, ruptured the, uh, on the north flank of the cone here, created uh, several new vents. In that first day, there was actually that, that buildup of pressure was kind of relieved quickly, and so it sent out a fast-moving AA flow, but this, this didn't last very long. What did last, what did persist, was pohoihoi activity, tube-fed, that kind of came in this direction, towards the northeast. So this is the first day. That vent, unfortunately, was on the north side of the cone. Again, like I said, there's this subtle ridge here, so that means that any lava that comes out of the vent is going to be directed towards the northeast, kind of like the Kahawalea flow. And that's, that's exactly what happened. So the, the flow it advanced it, uh, through the next couple months. It actually extended beyond the, the edge of the existing flow field. And right when it did that, it actually dropped, it did something really remarkable um, and really unusual. It, it, the lava dropped into a series of deep ground cracks. So this is really the first time that we, well, uh, uh, like 20 years ago, there was a brief period where, it where lava briefly dropped into a, a, a system of cracks, but it wasn't, didn't last that long. This lava, on the other hand, this is really the first sustained period that we had lava uh, basically plunge into cracks and active um, within a crack system. And the lava was flowing through this crack system uh, for more than a mile. And uh, the forest here, you can see, is really thick. Um, when it was moving through the crack system, we couldn't actually even see the crack system. We obviously couldn't see the lava. We were tracking the progress of the flow based on uh, steam coming up through the forest. And you know, when we go out on successive days, we'd see the steam a couple hundred meters or a couple hundred yards farther. But eventually, after a mile or so, the lava popped out on the surface, created this pad here, and then you can see what happened after that. It plunged back into a different crack. So the, the East Rift Zone, is a whole se series of, of deep cracks. There are cracks everywhere. Uh, there are cracks that you, you can barely see uh, from the air through the thick vegetation, but they're there. Um, and the lava was basically uh, plunging in and then coming to the surface a little uh, a short distance farther and then plunging back into a different crack. Um, and it did this a series of three, uh, basically four times. But eventually it, it uh, Got to the, the flow front, got to the surface, and stayed on the surface. Started flowing north, and it started flowing uh, around the subdivision of Koohe homesteads here. Um, the crack system is out here, and it was starting to flow um, kind of in this in this direction around the subdivision. Fortunately, but it basically, but where where it was heading was basically right on um, a direct line towards Pahoa. Um, so obviously this was a, a major hazard concern, and so we were mapping the flow uh, on a daily basis and staying in close communication with uh, Hawaii County Civil Defense. Um, and by October 24th, the flow was just short of Cemetery Road, which is a continuation of a Paa Street. Um, and this is where the Pahoa Transfer Station is. This is a, a cemetery and a house here. Um, and then here is basically uh, private property, and we have Pahoa Village Road somewhere around here. So it was, it was really bearing down on Pahoa in late October. Uh, on the early morning of October 25th, it crossed the road here. Um, you can actually, and it surrounded a utility pole here. You can see the utility pole is actually protected by a pile of cinder. Um, we worked with Helco to, to try to uh, um, protect the utility poles as long as possible. This was a mixed success. Um, the pole was protected and, and did uh, was unaffected for a few days, but eventually ignited so, um, and started burning. So, uh, but power w wasn't interrupted, so uh, mixed success. OK, so getting into October, uh, basically Halloween of last year, we have the vent here, uh, the June 27th flow. This is the June 27th flow showing the, the dark red is basically expansion here of the flow um, during this period. And you can see here's the ground crack system that the flow was traveling along, and it popped out on the surface finally and flowed around Ka'ohe homesteads. And then, in a narrow section of the flow, moved at a fast rate towards Pahoa. So 
in late October, it really looked like this flow was, was uh, basically on the verge of crossing Pahoa Village Road, you know, the main street in downtown Pahoa. But amazingly, it, it didn't. It stalled. It stalled. Here, I'll give you a sense here. This is Pahoa Village Road here. This is the house. Uh, this is the house here. The, the flow front stalled just 150 yards from Pahoa Village Road, about 70 yards from this house. Um, why, did it, why did it stall? Well, the reason it stalled is because the, the lava supply rate to the flow, uh, it fluctuates all the time. And uh, prior to this uh, period, the, the lava supply rate was actually pretty steady. Um, and when you have a steady lava supply rate, it means that the flow is just continuously fed and so it's going to advance. What happened on beginning, I think it was October 30th, is that we saw a sharp drop in the lava supply rate. And, and the way we, we know that is we basically the, um, we track uh, the ground tilt at the summit, the summit magma chamber that I told you about that feeds the, this eruption. When it deflates, that means that there's a lower, it basically translates to a lower lava supply rate uh, on, on the flow field. And what we saw on October, I think it was October 30th, we saw a sharp deflation, a really abrupt major deflation that was really very fortunately timed, because a couple days later the flow stalled. Uh, but the, the lava supply didn't shut off. It, it kept coming through the tube, and that's why we had breakouts here, just a little bit upslope. So basically, we had the lava supply rate drop enough that it starved the flow front, but not so much that the, that the flows became completely inactive. We still had lava coming out of the lava tube system that was developing, um, and these flows were then creating some expansion on, along the margins of the flow uh, for the next couple weeks. Basically, early November is when the flow was kind of expanding, but not really advancing. And that resulted in the, the, basically the first uh, uh, loss of, a, of an occupied house. Um, obviously, the house was vacated at this point. Um, but November 10th, as we had this, this um, well, house out of view in, in this image, but we had a house, uh, there was a house destroyed. The, the first and only for this particular flow. And with that expansion in early November, we had flow uh, lava that basically entered the, uh, the transfer station. Some of you have probably been to the, many of you have probably been to the transfer station. You've, yeah. Have you seen the, uh, did you get a chance to see these? Uh, these flows are actually, some of them are still preserved on this embankment. We had lava that's, that basically reached this, uh, the top of this embankment, inflated and reached the top of the embankment, kind of melted or burned through the, uh, the chain link fence here and spilled out onto the, onto the uh, asphalt. Uh, so here's a view looking down slope uh, from the helicopter. Here's Pohoa. Uh, here's the, the flow that the tube kind of goes through here, crossed the road here in, uh, in uh, October 25th moved towards Pahoa, but stalled uh, just short. I will say, though, it did uh, bury some private property here. Um, and then over the next couple weeks, in early November, we had basically these lobes develop. And it was this lobe, oops, sorry. It was this lobe, sorry, that came and destroyed the house here. Um, actually, the flow also covered most of the cemetery there. And we had subsequent lobes, kind of expansion, that uh, just crept into the transfer station, but luckily didn't create a huge amount of damage. That, this pad of lava has now been cleared. So, um, and you know, a while ago, the, the transfer station was, was back into full operation. And actually, just recently, um, they, I guess they cleared this section of road here. OK, so what we had in November I, I told you how in, on October 30th and late October, we had this decrease, this deflation event and this decrease in the lava supply rate. Well, that's often followed by an increase, uh, and actually it was uh, in mid-November. What, what that resulted in was a surge of lava through the, through the system. Now, you'd think that if you had a surge of lava through the system, that, that the, these flows would actually, uh, you know, really start resume this, you know, this really fast advance and, and, uh, and then and cover Poho Village Road here and the highway. Uh, but that's not what happened. What, that surge was actually uh, so great that the lava tube that transports lava from the vent here all the way out here, it couldn't handle it. It basically broke. Um, 
So lava started to break out, actually, just, uh, just beyond the crack system. It started to break out at this spot here, just west of Kohei Homesteads. So when you had lava breaking out here, it basically robbed the supply from this section of the flow and totally shut this section of the flow off, so it was dead. That was obviously good news uh, for Pahoa, or at least this part of Pahoa. The flow was still active, and that surge of lava basically just created a new lobe and that lobe was starting to move along this direction. Now, the reason it went along this direction is because that earlier flow, you know, I to told you about flow inflation, so it kind of, the flow built its own topography. So it kind of diverted this new flow a little bit towards the north. And you can see this new flow is on this, it's following this blue line, the steepest descent line. You can see where this blue line goes. Anyone know where that goes? Yeah, the, the market. So uh, it basically was taking it directly towards uh, the um, Pahoa marketplace. Yeah, so in uh, early uh, December and mid-December, mid we saw a new lobe that was basically traveling directly towards Pahoa marketplace and, and this major intersection. So again, even though this lobe over here by the transfer station and Pahoa Village Road was shut off, we had a new threat. Um, so obviously we were out here quite often, obviously, uh, you know, on a daily basis, making assessments of the flow. And obviously this was a, this was a trying time too, because uh, with the holiday season, uh, a lot of these stores had to close. Uh, they uh, pumped the gasoline out of the gas station there. So, um, uh, you know, there was obviously a lot of disruption uh, that this, this flow was uh, creating. And the, the, the flow reached just short of the marketplace in early January and basically kind of stalled. Um, we, we still had lava supply, but it wasn't quite enough to push the flow forward. So for the next month or so, we just saw scattered activity here that was just kind of scattering and uh, scattered and filling in low areas, not creating a lot of forward progress. Again, probably because there was a, a very low, just kind of a, a low steady uh, lava supply rate. The flow basically kind of reached this point here in uh, mid-early January and, uh, and didn't reach, uh, fortunately, didn't reach the marketplace or the highway here. This is also the fire and police station. So what happened in, so that continued, that kind of uh, lava just hanging out in this area uh, uh, continued for the next uh, few months, basically into early March. And uh, even though it wasn't moving, you know, we were obviously still keeping a close eye on it because let's say we had a, a surge, well, not a surge, or maybe a, a gradual increase in the lava supply rate, you could have potentially this lava then resume its downslope march. Fortunately, that didn't happen. Um, lava just kind of hung out here. And what we had in mid-March was uh, the flow front here is basically stalled. And what we had is another one of those surges that I told you about. Um, and it was basically a surge that was uh, of lava that was too much for the lava tube to handle. So the lava started breaking out from the lava tube in this area here, close to Puo, actually here and several spots along here. Again, what that did, because we had lava breaking out of the tube, it robbed the supply from this distal portion of the flow. So this whole section of the flow was basically shut off in mid-March. And that was really good news, obviously, for Pahoa in this area here. So uh, following mid-March, uh, mid we just had activity that was really focused closer to Pua'o here. Uh, this is how it looked in early April. We had some scattered activity here. Uh, this is Pu'u Kahawalea, which is now completely buried by lava. So I want to uh, summarize the activity on the flow field uh, for the past six or seven months. And uh, here is the box that's kind of uh, zoomed in on the Pu'o area. Here's Pu'o, the vent is here. Uh, this whole area by this time is totally dead. Um, and we just had activity that was really focused in this area. So let's zoom in here. So April 20th, April 2015, uh, the red, dark red areas just show the, the activity in this period. And you can see that as we go through the rest of the year, we don't have really, adv we don't have renewed advancement. We just have, I'll go, go back here, we just have expansion of the flow field. Um, 
That's probably because of a couple things. We have a, a generally low lava supply right now, um, and the lava is scattered, so it's not really focusing. Uh, it's just kind of filling in areas um, uh, in, in this area here, uh, which is obviously good news. You know, that it's not advancing. Uh, so it, we still have fluctuations, though, on the flow field. And, and sometimes if we have a, a little pulse, let's say, through the lava tube, we can have these breakouts. Uh, we, these breakouts come out of the tube here and create a, a pretty vigorous flow. Uh, but usually these, well, over the past you know, six or seven months, these breakouts have been relatively short-lived. Um, and, and even though they, they, they look really impressive, particularly you know, if there's you know, well-timed video, um, they're not a huge change on the flow field. It's, it's not, a, you know, say, a new flow that's you know, bearing down on Pahoa or down slope. It's just a small breakout that's created a new lobe. And usually these lobes, these breakout lobes, are very often they're dead within a day or two. So sometimes you'll see them in the news, um, but uh, oftentimes they, they won't be a major event. And the activity we've had over the last, uh, you know, over uh, latter half of last year and up to today is just typical pohoehoe behavior here. Some ropey pohoehoe. Uh, here's puo. -o. And uh, again, scattered, uh, not making a lot of advancement. Uh, one change we did have, uh, kind of a moderate change, is we had a breakout from the tube that happened uh, just before Thanksgiving, uh, closer to puo here. It created a new lobe. That lobe actually remains active, and so it was pushed a little bit towards the north by the existing earlier flows. So these flows are actually burning a little more forest um, now than uh, compared to, say, three months ago. Uh, so I guess if we have a slack wind day, sometimes you, you might be able to smell the, the forest burning. So this is a recent view, and this is a satellite image uh, taken on December 30th. It gives a nice overview of the flow field. Here's Puo, so here's the, the Puo flow field. Here's Royal Gardens, you can see, you know, completely buried. Um, here's Puo, and the red pixels are basically active lava, or areas of active lava, and you can see how scattered it is. And you can see also there's a little bit active along the forest boundary, again, creating some smoke. Uh, but really no more than four miles from Puo. And it's basically been that way for the last, well, at least four or five months, maybe six months. It hasn't been much farther than about four miles. This is that portion of the June 27th flow that entered the ground crack here. You can see how there's, it's a, you get a sense of that and how, where it came out of the ground and then flowed around Kohei Homesteads here, it flowed around and then crossed a paw street and into Pahoa. Again, that section of the flow is, is now dead. <coughs> 